Nick. Slept so good in my fiber path mainsail. Ah. Can't believe you slept in there again. Cruising catamarans have a bad reputation in some ways in terms of sailing performance. You can't go upwind, right? Or you can't go upwind unless you've got dagger boards. Well, after five years of sailing this cruising catamaran, we've come to realize that a lot of that reputation is unfounded. And the blame on poor performance really goes to the sails. All right, we really do love our Ullman Fiber Path mainsail. It's been a game changer for sure. And while I highly recommend this sail and this company, this video is not going to be a commercial for Ullman. Instead, I'm gonna make the case for why you should consider upgrading your sails for a more comfortable ride and much higher performance. I'm also gonna argue that the regular Dacron sails supplied on most cruising catamarans are inadequate. Let's rewind and talk a little bit about aerodynamics. After all, your sailboat sail is an airfoil. It's a wing. And without getting too wrapped up in the physics, a wing basically works like this. Wind passes over a curved surface and it produces lift. The faster the wind passes over the foil, the more lift you get. Well, what happens when you want to produce less lift, like when you're trying to land the airplane? You pull the power back and the airplane slows. As the plane slows, you have to pull back on the yoke. You're increasing the angle of attack to produce the same amount of lift. That increases the drag on the airfoil and it slows the plane down even more. Eventually, we run out of lift and the wing stalls. Ideally, this happens just as the airplane touches down. And I nailed it. That little horn you heard as I touched down was the stall warning horn. Well done, me. Aside from showing off, what's the point here? On our sailboat, we're using the foils to produce lift. We certainly don't want to stall the airfoil like we do when we're landing an airplane. And we want most of our component of lift to be going in the same direction as we're traveling. It's a fine line. And just like in flying, skill definitely matters. But particularly for ocean-going catamarans, equipment can be a big problem. This is Clarity's mainsail after four seasons of use. Little hard to see, so I highlighted it, but the sail is fluttering, first at the forward edge, and then kind of towards the middle of the sail. So we do what we should, and we trim the sail in, increasing the angle of attack. If the sail's in good shape, this results in more lift. The boat will point higher, and the speed will increase. But when a sail is blown out and the center of lift is too far aft, trimming the sail in just pulls the boat to leeward. And in extreme cases, when you over trim a blown out sail, you'll stall the sail and then you'll also stall the keels and the boat really starts to slide sideways. Now, old blown out sails cause this problem on any boat, but on a monohull, this results in more healing and not necessarily more leeway. The catamaran, in stark contrast, just slides downwind. And because the catamaran doesn't heal, it's really hard to feel when the boat's making too much leeway. You really gotta look over your shoulder to see that your wake is at an angle. And catamarans are really tough 
on sales. Again, it's because they don't heal. Every wave, every swell, all that force gets transferred directly into the sale plan. In fact, a hardware manufacturer I met at the Annapolis Boat Show sizes hardware for catamarans at 1.5 to 1.7 times the size of a monohull. And if the sails aren't built strong enough, they'll wear out really quickly. Clarity's main was nearly new when we bought the boat. But after three seasons and about 14,000 miles, her Dacron main was not looking so good. We knew that laminate sails were really called for. We'd seen incredible results with our last boat. Either way was a 1981 Freedom Cat Catch with two freestanding carbon fiber masts, wish booms, and wraparound two-ply sails. Far from a performance boat. But it got us back out on the water, I got to grow a beard, and we had a fantastic time cruising the Pacific Northwest, eventually heading down to California. We loved the boat, but once we got into consistent, stronger winds, we realized the sails were just a no-go. On the San Francisco Bay, we were heeled way over and the boat was slow. So we decided to invest big time in new sails. We had a set of Doyle Stratus cruising laminates made for either way. And overnight, it was like a whole new boat. We were sailing more upright with a lot less healing. The boat was way faster and she was so much easier to handle, even in rough weather. The only downside, the cost. We spent almost as much on the sails as we had on the boat itself. When Ullman offered to set us up with a fiber path laminate mainsail with no strings attached, we jumped at the opportunity. Designer Brad Steffens came up with a sail that was actually slightly smaller than our original main, just two square meters smaller, and that'll take some of the weather helm out of the boat, especially going downwind. The construction of a membrane laminate sail is fascinating. All the fibers are strung directionally so that they take the stress in the right spots. You end up with a sail that has very low stretch and keeps its shape perfectly. Protective taffeta is then laminated to the strung panels. After the glue cures for a few weeks, they roll it on up and finish off the sail. And there's a lot of detail work that goes into this. The result of all this hard work is a gorgeous sail that is bulletproof. These sails are so much stronger than Dacron. And unlike Dacron that will slowly lose its shape over a period of time depending on its use, this sail will maintain its shape throughout its lifetime. This new sail is about 30 kilos lighter. Uh, I, can, I can raise it about three quarters of the way just by hand, just pulling on it. So weight makes a big difference. We've put about 2,500 miles on this sail now, and we've seen it in a variety of conditions. From sporty, where we're reefed down in 25 to 30 knots, to the light stuff, where we could have the full sail up and sail close to the speed of the wind. You don't have to be an expert to see that this is a beautiful sail and it's got a beautiful shape. But the question is, how does it perform and how much better does it perform than our old sail? Well, we've got real data. Let's take a look. Now, before we get started, I want to set the ground rules because anybody can sheet their sails in real tight and say that their boat will point way up into the wind. 
And the same sort of fuzzy data is often given for tacking angles. Sure, you can tack through 80 degrees, but what's your track over the ground? That's what really matters, because a boat can point high, but still make plenty of leeway. So to take all the extra outside forces out of the equation, let's just compare two tracks. The red track is our old mainsail from last year. The blue track is the track from this year with our Ullman fiber path. The wind direction was a little bit different year to year, but the wind speed was very similar. It was light between eight and nine knots both days. What we're testing here is just how high each sail can point at the boat's maximum VMG, or velocity made good. And we're doing so in conditions where the difference between apparent and true wind will be greatest. Nothing fancy here, we're just getting out the old high school protractor. On tack one with our old sail, we are making the tack entry at about 150, and after the tack, we're at about 352. That's a 158 degree tack angle. Not very good. Tack three is even worse. We're in at 150 and out at 340 against the course over ground. That's a true tacking angle of 170 degrees. That's the kind of horrible upwind performance that gives cruising catamarans a bad name. All right, let's sheet the fiber path in and see what it does. Here we are sailing at 34 degrees apparent in about eight knots of wind and we're doing five and a half knots through the water. Our first tack we're in at about 170 and out at 048. So our tacking angle with the course over ground is 122 degrees. And tack five is very similar. It's a tacking angle of about 125 degrees. Now those aren't race boat numbers, but obviously the new sail makes a big difference getting upwind. And we're demonstrating this in some of the toughest possible conditions where the difference between the true and apparent wind is greatest. And yet, looking at our wake behind the boat, I wouldn't say we're making more than 10 degrees of leeway. And as the wind speed increases, the difference between the apparent wind and the true wind decreases. Yes! You got it. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, so compare the tacking angle that we had before with right now. I mean, we're tacking through about 100 degrees in 12 or 13 knots of wind. So when we've got the wind, this boat can point up wind pretty well. And we can realistically sail as close as about 42 to 45 degrees when the winds are higher. I don't have any hard data to share with you to this point, but anecdotally I'll tell you that the further we sail off the wind, the less the difference our new mainsail makes. And that makes a lot of sense. If you've got a blown out sail and you're going downwind, sail shape becomes less important than sail area. So far I've been a cheerleader for the laminate sails, but you can count on me for a balanced look at these things. Fiber path or any of the laminate sails are going to hold up to the abuse a catamaran doles out much better over time. That means better sail shape and better sailing for longer. The Dacron sail on the other side has a couple things going for it as well. First of all, it's a lot less expensive. A cross-cut Dacron sail is going to cost somewhere between a half and a third of what a laminate sail would cost. Secondly, with Dacron, if you keep it covered from the UV rays, the fabric itself may actually last longer, even if it's all stretched out. 
Laminate sails, depending on where they're sailed and how they're treated, can sometimes delaminate. The glue that holds them together simply fails. Friends of ours have said that their laminates delaminated after four to five seasons. But the only problem we ever had personally with our laminate sails was a blown out reef tack. Otherwise, the sails performed flawlessly and had no delamination issues even after seven seasons. Obviously, the answer is to just spend more money on your sails, right? Well, there's definitely some decisions and trade-offs to be made because for the cost of one laminate sail, you could replace that sail twice or maybe even three times with a heavier Dacron sail. So the question becomes, do you want performance all the way through the lifespan of the sail or do you want to be going back to the sail maker every couple of years to get new sails that aren't blown out? As usual, it's always a trade-off. I think overall, on cruising boats, sails don't get enough attention. There's a tendency to think that, hey, what's the hurry? This isn't a race. And that may work for a lot of folks. But when it comes to cruising catamarans, especially those that don't have dagger boards, bad sail trim and bad sail shape give the boats bad performance reputations. And a lot of owners treat their sails like they would the tires on their car. They slowly wear out and eventually you gotta replace them, right? But that's really the wrong analogy. Your sails are your engine. And if your engine slowly wore out and was making less and less power over time, you'd take it to the mechanic or you'd replace that engine. So if you feel like you're towards the back of the pack and want to squeeze out a bit more speed from the boat, take a good long look at your current sails. If you've got Dacron sails on your heavy cruising catamaran and you've done quite a few ocean miles, there's a good chance they're already worn out. <laughs>